When was the last time you went to a big name, multi-day, camping on site music festival? For me, it was in 2005. Ooh, I'm old. In 2005, I was lucky enough to get a press pass to go to Beni Kassim. Partly that was due to a blog that I had at the time where I took pictures of Paris nightlife and also because I knew someone at a local student radio station and through that I was able to get the press pass sorted out. Right after arriving and setting up the tent, the first band that I saw was the Polyphonic Spree. There were definitely at least a dozen people on stage playing instruments singing. Uh, there, was w the, there was one main guy that was kind of like the, definitely the front man and the, almost like the conductor. It was a really great first experience. Uh, it was a very communal musical experience uh, and it was kind of like a rock chorus in a way. Because I was there for three days and the camera that I had back in 2005 only had a 16 megabyte memory card, I would be switching between different resolutions in order to conserve space. So some of the pictures that I'm showing right now are going to be in 640 by 480 resolution, which I know is even less than the webcam uh, on your computer. Every day uh, the festival grounds, uh, band started to play at 4 p.m. and uh, there was programming all the way through into the early hours of the morning uninterrupted. This next set of pictures is of a band called The Kills, uh, which was made up of a, a guy and a girl. Um, the guy had been in a band beforehand uh, called Scarfo. They, I think they released one album but never really went anywhere. And so then The Kills became uh, his next project and was wildly more successful. It was definitely one of the bigger names on the festival roster that year. Let me talk a little bit about the perks of having a press pass at Beni Kassim that year. I had access to the press tent, which was air conditioned, and you had free Red Bull. There were also computers where you could uh, send articles through, or in my case, update my blog. They had press conferences there. In fact, I'll put up a picture of me in the uh, press conference area, which looks a little bit like a, a classroom or, or lecture hall outdoors, I guess. Um, and the press conference that I went to was with Casey Spooner of the famed Electroclash duo Fisher Spooner. Uh, and it was a pretty eye-opening experience, actually. I think it was very boring for him. Uh, the journalists that were there hardly asked any questions. In fact, I think I asked three questions in a row and then kind of felt bad, so I stopped. But I definitely had lots of questions for him, considering that at the time, I think, the second album for Fisher Spooner had just come out after the first album, which had been hyped and had, you know, put them on the scene. So, anyways, that was an interesting experience. The next set of pictures I'm going to talk about are of Devendra Banhart and his band. They played in a big enclosed area. It was an interesting space because there was a there was, of course, an open area in the middle. There were lots of people there, but you also had this side seating, almost like bleacher-like side seating. So you could either be in the middle or you could go and sit down in the benches. The next picture that I have for you is of Erland Oi or Kings of Convenience. I'm not sure if he was doing his solo thing at that time. Uh, it's from the same stage as Devendra Banhart. Uh, it was also a really great performance. I suspect that maybe that stage was a acoustic performance stage of some kind. These next pictures are of a band called Maximo Park, and uh, they were, it was high energy rock and roll of the time, very much riding on the coattails of Franz Ferdinand and uh, bands like that. Uh, the, uh, yeah, and you can see from the sartorial choices, it's very much of the those early 2000s uh, sort of stylings, rock and roll stylings. This last set of pictures was taken at a DFA Records 
showcase that was run by the festival that year. The New York based record label was very much hot property, having put out the Rapture's first album and uh, LCD sound system being on everyone's minds at that time. In the pictures you'll see Black Dice, uh, there's also James Murphy, the label head, and Tim Sweeney, and then uh, Hot Chip, uh, a British act that were very much uh, in the spirit of uh, DFA Records. And there's also uh, a random shot from the audience, someone who had a pretty cool outfit, and then uh, a couple of uh, music equipment shots, notably uh, the Sinair, which is a drum synthesizer, a vintage drum synthesizer, so that was uh, pretty cool to see on stage, and also an electrics effects unit. I used to have one of their half-rack filters uh, for a bit, which was pretty cool, and then uh, it has a fun sticker there on the back as well. Thank you so much for watching this far. I would love to hear uh, what the last music festival you attended was, as well as uh, the bands that you really enjoyed. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Have a good one. See you next time.